Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, the Tech Lead Coach, and welcome to my channel. This is the right channel for you if you're a software engineer who wants to get promoted, become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. Today, I'll be sharing with you my story of how I went from being a junior engineer in Silicon Valley to becoming a tech lead in less than a year and how you can do it too. So let me tell you a bit about myself. After finishing my master's in Canada, I moved to San Francisco to work as a backend engineer. I worked at different startups and ended up leading small and large teams. I've been doing that for eight years and I learned so much about leadership that now I work as a career coach with software engineers, helping them develop the skill set that will bring them to the next level in their career. So when I started my first job in San Francisco, working at a startup as a backend engineer, I had no idea about web development. My job was in web development, but I didn't know what an endpoint was. I didn't know a whole lot about databases. I took those things as courses in school, but I never actually worked in it, especially since I came from a research background. But then within less than a year, I grew to become a tech lead of a team of eight people. Four of them were engineers, two backend and two front end. So I really wanna break down to you what were the factors to my ability to become a tech lead in less than a year in such a short period of time and what really contributed to that success. The way I'm going to describe it is I'm going to talk about factors that were external to me. So they were things that were not in my control. And then I'll talk about the internal factors that essentially things that I did that were in my control. And then I'll summarize about what are the key takeaways from all of these that you can apply to your career. So let me talk about one of the first external factors that wasn't in my control. When I started in this startup, I was put as the only backend engineer on a team that just got a new project and I had no experience as a backend engineer. I think they quickly realized it. I was terrified, they were terrified. Unknowingly, now looking back, I realized that I was very lucky that I was essentially like a founding engineer of a new project and an important project for the company. And so what ended up happening is that over time, the project grew and more engineers got added to it. And every single person that got added I was the only engineer that could teach them about the domain area because I already had the knowledge about that, the code that was written, the architecture that we came up with. I essentially had the benefit of being a founding engineer in this team. I became essentially more senior in terms of the knowledge I had, although I did not have the years of experience that other engineers had that joined later on. The other really important thing is that this was a mission critical project for the company. And I think this was one of the most important factors that also is one key takeaway for you. Being on a mission critical project for a company means that you get a lot of recognition and you get a lot of visibility. And especially because I was the only engineer for quite a while, something like six months, my name was associated with that project. And so very quickly, everybody in the company came to know who I was and the importance of the project allowed me to have a lot of responsibility and grow very fast in my career. The other thing that really contributed to my success is that I had an amazing mentor at this company. He taught me about how to approach architectural problems, which architecture to choose, how to think about these problems. And that was invaluable to me. And this is one thing that I can highly recommend to you that if you have somebody like that in your company, take advantage of them because it's one thing to learn these things from books and a completely different thing when you're working at a company in a specific context and you understand how these things are actually applied to the real product, to the real code base. The other factor that really helped is that I was working at a startup. You always have a lot less support because startups don't have as many people as bigger corporations. You may not have a product manager that gives you answers. You have to go and dig in for answers yourselves. You have to understand more, you have to collaborate more, and that really allows you to grow so much faster as an engineer because you're not just sitting there and writing code. You're digging into requirements, you're talking to people from uh, SRE, you're talking people to people on a platform team. You essentially have to become the person that just figures it out. And I think that is was one of the most critical things that helped me grow so quickly in my career. The other thing that's really good about working at a startup is essentially you are rewarded so much more for merit rather than credentials. So like I said, I didn't have the years of experience. 
But because I was working so hard on a mission critical project, I was going above and beyond. I was rewarded. I was rewarded in growth because of the responsibility I was given, but I was also rewarded in career growth. And that's the great thing about a company like a startup. They're not gonna wait five years to put you into the next level of a senior engineer or tech lead just because that is like what's expected. And the last thing I wanna talk about is that I had a manager who was pretty hands-off, who was very busy, but the one thing that I really valued about him is that he believed in me. He took a bet on me, I was hired, I was put into this team, I was given a lot of responsibility. And about eight months into the role, he told me, Yulia, you are leadership material. You have leadership skills. You should be, be the tech lead of this team. And honestly, I was so shocked and so intimidated that I completely had no idea. I forgot to ask him, like, what are leadership qualities? What does this mean? What is my new role gonna be? I didn't ask any of that. I just said yes and I jumped in and figured it out. So now I wanna talk about the factors that did depend on me. One of the first things, is work ethic. Work ethic is super important no matter where you are in your career. It's about working hard. It's about showing that you care. It's about going the extra mile and going above and beyond and showing people that you're fully, fully engaged in the role. Those first few years that I worked at that company, I worked a lot of overtime, especially initially. I knew that I had so much to learn. I would learn after work, after hours. I would watch videos. I would read books. I really tried to ramp up quickly. I tried to learn as much as I can from the people around me. And yes, I made mistakes, but the good thing is I never made them twice. I tried to understand why did I make that mistake and learn from that? The other thing that's really important is I'm a very diligent, detail-oriented person and I really dig in deep to understand what I'm doing. That is one of the most important skill sets because as an engineer, whatever level you're at, when you are given a problem to solve, it's really important to dig in. First of all, understand the, the problem on a deeper level, which means understand the requirements, dig in more to the, into the requirements, talk to the product manager, understand what is asked of you to solve. How does that fit with the bigger product and the bigger mission of the company, as well as other code bases that are there? There are often many teams in your company, in many engineering teams, and you need to understand how the work you're doing fits in with everything else. That may mean also the kind of architectural patterns being used, best standards, and things like that. So it's really about solving problems, not in a vacuum, but using the environment that you're in and asking questions and understanding the bigger picture. As you dig in deeper into the problem, you have the ability to spot gaps that nobody else can see. The great thing about being an engineer on a certain project is that you become the expert in a code base and in those requirements. There's nobody as close to the code as you are. And so that gives you the unique ability to tie things and to conclude things that somebody like a product manager or somebody further away from the code just cannot see these things coming together. And that is where it's important for you to then spot gaps and talk about them with people on your team. But to take it to the next level is where you can take ownership and take initiative. And so being solution oriented is really how you start taking initiative, start owning these problems. And that really shows you as a leader to the rest of your team and to the rest of the company. And the last thing I wanna say is I was always very collaborative. And in that environment in the startup where you have to go and find answers on your own, you just have to go and talk to people. You have to understand the code you're writing, the problem you're solving, how it fits in with everything. So you have to talk to other teams, to other tech leads, to other engineers, and sometimes even other product managers. And I think that is one of the things that really shows that an engineer is capable of being a leader eventually, because a lot of what leadership is, is finding how a problem fits in the context of a company, how the solution works for everybody. And it's that element of collaborating and negotiating that becomes really important. So what are the key takeaways here that you can apply to your career? Number one, be strategic about the company, the team, and the project you're on. If you have the flexibility, if you're looking for a job, 
really think about the kind of companies that you're passionate about and that will have that quick growth path. Of course, startups are in some sense an easier way to go about because you can grow so much faster than a traditional company. But even in a traditional company, if you're choosing a project that is mission critical, that is really important for the company, immediately you're gonna get a lot of visibility. Your name will become synonymous with that project. You're gonna be sitting in meetings with other people, maybe even executives, and you're gonna be the key person that they're going to invite because you're the engineer on that team. You're gonna have so much more visibility and your ideas are gonna be heard. And once people see that product succeed, people are gonna know that you had a critical contribution that was made into this product. And so that is really important, being strategic about the company and the team you're on, and don't be afraid to move teams within the same company and reposition yourself for the success that you want to have. The other thing that I always tell to every engineer that I ever worked with is speak up, share your ideas. It's super important to end, to ask questions and share ideas when you have them. Asking questions is one of the easiest things to do because you still, you don't need to be an expert on the thing. You just need to have that intellectual curiosity. You wanna understand what does this product requirement mean in a technical sense? How does this product requirement tie to another product that is built in the company? It's maybe going to another team and talking to them about what they do. But that ability to ask questions, that intellectual curiosity, means that over time you're going to build that depth of knowledge that you will then be teaching others. And inevitably, the longer you are at the company, there will be new people who will join your team and you're gonna be the one teaching them. The third critical thing is taking initiative. Now that can mean contributing in code reviews, asking questions, going to teams and making sure what that you're building is the right thing to them, but one of the most important things is finding gaps and proposing solutions to them. I think that is like the biggest contribution you can make to your team is when you spot a gap that nobody else has seen and it doesn't have to be a big gap. So because you're closest to the code, pay attention where you see those gaps, talk to your tech lead, talk to the senior people on your team, talk to your product manager and see if you can even come up with a solution. Taking initiative is one of the most important things that will lead you into leadership. And one of the last things is really to take advantage of the people that you're around, learning from them, learning from their years of experience, learning from their mistakes. So if you have great senior people you work with, make sure you build those relationships, meet them at some cadence, maybe once a month for a coffee, ask them about their career path, ask them about what they like about engineering, what are some cool things they can teach you about design patterns, architecture, how do they think about problems, and how do they approach them. These four things are going to really help you ramp up as an engineer and move to the next level or become a tech lead. So tell me in the comments about your experience growing as an engineer and what suggestions do you have for other engineers like you? Please visit my website, yuliaeskin.com to learn more about my coaching, the workshops I host and sign up to my newsletter. And if you like this video and it was helpful for you, let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.